How to spot a planet in the daylight. Hey there, stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Plot Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. Hey Dean, have you ever spotted a planet during the daytime before the sun goes down? Of course, hasn't everyone? Well, no, it's not that easy. But if we share a few tips, our fellow stargazers will be able to find the brightest planet, Venus, in the daytime. And next week, the moon is perfectly placed to make it even easier. Let's show you. Okay, we have our skies set up for about an hour after sunset, Tuesday, November 5th. And if you look south of west, a skinny crescent moon will be about a fist above the horizon. And to the left of the moon is the brilliant planet Venus. Now, Venus is the brightest point of light out there. Do you remember that wishing poem from your childhood? Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might, have the wish I wish tonight. Well, it's easy to see why that almost never worked, because most of the time we were wishing on this planet. And the following night, Wednesday the 6th, the moon will be even closer to Venus, less than half as far as it was on Tuesday. Then Thursday night, the moon will be past Venus and will be almost twice as far as it was on Wednesday. Let's look at that again, because it's this rapid motion of the moon from day to day that makes the moon so useful as a pointer in the sky. Tuesday evening, November 5th, Wednesday the 6th, and Thursday the 7th. On each of those evenings, the moon will be close enough to Venus to help you find it, but you don't really need the moon's help to locate Venus after sunset. But during the day, it's really hard to do it without the moon's help. Now, it may surprise you to hear that the moon and Venus are visible during the daytime, but they are. The sun's light doesn't magically turn off the moon or Venus, or the stars for that matter but the sun puts so much more light into the daytime sky that they have a hard time competing for your attention. And it's your perception that is most important. Because the moon is visible in the daytime for most of the month, but few people ever see it, mostly because they don't look for it. Now, the key to finding Venus in the daytime is knowing when the moon is close enough to Venus to serve as a pointer. And November 5th, 6th, and 7th are three such days. First, find a building on your southwestern horizon. You're going to use the building as a shield to block the sun. You have to stand so the sun is blocked by the building, but not too much. Ah, Goldilocks strikes again. Yes. Anyway, the best time to try this is between 3 and 5 in the afternoon. Stand so the sun is blocked by the building, enough so that you can look at the sky without squinting. Then mentally estimate where the sun would be if the building weren't there, and then look about 4 to 5 fists to the left of the sun and look for the four-day-old moon. You'll probably be surprised at how big the moon will appear to be, but finding the moon is just the first step to finding Venus in the daytime sky. After you've located the moon, hold your fist so the moon is just above your thumb. Venus will be just to the left of your ring finger. Venus will be about seven degrees below the moon on November 6th, so this is the best day to try it. But the day before, the 5th, will work, and the day after, the seventh will work too. Let's look at the sky, say, 3.30, and then about an hour after sunset, so you can see how the moon and Venus seem to twist as they set. Here's 3.30, and then an hour after sunset. So we have the moon and Venus in the daytime, and the moon and Venus after the sun has gone down on November 5th, 6th, and 7th. Is the sun really going down, or are we turning away from it? That's something to think about as we keep, keep looking, looking up. up.